Hello, Ikron fans! This is Shadow333 bringing you a match between Kitan playing Grekum and Shadow333 playing Vekir. Thank you, Shadow333, for playing Vekir. And yes, I am. I should say, Shadow333 is casting this in the third person because Shadow333 tries to be detached and objective like that. So, Shadow Fury is going for Vekir, going for trying to go for a perfect start with Design Veer here. Setting out the test Veer just to stay up a bit. Not sure what, what Kitan's gonna do, so. Kitan, on the other hand, like I said, is going Grekum. He's going for a standard Grekum build. He's going to be getting his progen tries, setting his Arcticus up to the front, and Arcticus up right here. And he is setting up some Octos for RPs very soon, I'm sure. So Shadow Fury is going to be building up his RPs as well, getting RPs in the front and slightly in the back as well to leave room so we can go around the side, and also getting some QP as well, because Vector does need a bit of early QP more than Grekum does. And right now we have Tethbeer going out of Scout, Shinbeer, like I said, hanging out around here just to double check for any cloaked units coming in. Probably no cloaked units will actually come in, but just double checking. Kitan, on the other hand, is going for, like I said, fairly heavy economy. Three Octos on economy, and two of them going to be attacking directly. So they're going to be scouting out Shadow Fury's base. And looks like, oh yeah, right, forgot to get the base going in here. And so the Octos are coming in very slowly. Because Kitan decided to go in slow motion. So now Kitan's Octos are coming in and they are going to be attacking directly, going for a little scout attack. While Shadow Fury, like I said, Teth Fear is coming in. Both players are actually about 30 seconds down from the present. However, Shadow Fury is fast forwarding, Kitan is not fast forwarding. Shadow Fury is building a foundation, very quick depot likely to be coming up. Though I'm sure that, all, that Shadow Fury will also be building some auto defense on top of that because auto defense is a very useful tech to have, especially against Grekum. Because far pods coming in, Chronoporter far pods are dangerous. You don't want to underestimate the power of those guys. So Kitan is now also getting some more Octos as well. It looks like these Octo, one of these Octos are going to be used to complete a triad. The other one is going to be used possibly for an attack. The two Octos that came in for an attack earlier are about to meet up Shadow Fury's base, and Shadow Fury already knows about them. It's on the blue time wave, but Shadow Fury is further in the past. Just double checking to make sure he has set up everything, setting up auto defense. Now, so auto defense has been researched just in case. Now getting more QP just to double check because I wanted a depot early on, but then then Shadow Fury must realize that there wasn't going to be as much point as getting auto defense just to double check against Octus because the Octus are coming in. So Shadow Fury needed to defend against them. So having auto defense allowed Shadow Fury, allowed him to get around that. While Kitan, on the other hand, Kitan from his point of view does see the Octus coming in and not being dealt a lot of damage because the auto defense has not been propagated up yet. Shadow Fury is going back, just double check, see what's going on, get his depot, try to micro the attack of the Zion Veer. The Zion Veer is too far away to really benefit from auto defense. Unfortunately, he, Shadow Fury is going to need to go back and fix that up. At the same time, the Test Veer is actually coming in to Kitan's base. Kitan is gone back and he is... Actually, is he retreating now? No, he's sending the Octos to the north to try to avoid the Zion Veer that was to the south while also trying to defend against the 10th Teth Beer and having no problems doing that. So more Octos coming in, building a lot of QP RPs, so Kitan has a fairly healthy tech in his base, fairly healthy RP distribution, getting also a Reef up very quickly, so that would be very helpful. While Shadow Fury building a Bastion to try to deal with this, but the Octos have been repelled, so just building another Bastion, leaving it here just to double check against Fire Pods or anything. And another our Foundation up here for ACC, and Zion Pulsars as well to be, to be used for skipping into the base of Kitan to help out damage what he has. But not a complete Zion Pulse strategy like we saw in this Kav game in round one. Instead, we're going to be probably going for only a couple Zion Pulses because Shadow Fury isn't quite as keen on going mass one units. It can be useful sometimes, but it's also one of the things that can be really risky. So right now, Kitan is a bit more worried about defense, making sure that he's not going to be attacked too much. He's building some domes with these Octos. He's probably going to be building about four domes, using all four Octos for it. And Shadow Fury, about 30 seconds up from here, is getting Skip Teleport onto one of his Zion Pulses. He's got two more Zion Pulses to get Skip Teleport onto, and also focusing on getting Tech up, getting his ACC up, and then from there, we'll be getting Air Units to help, like Shin Churchers and Tet Churchers to help defend against Far Pods, which will be inevitably coming from Kitan since he is playing Grekum. Also, and Kitan, however, has jumped back about two minutes, just to double check, see what the attack is actually happening out down here. And actually, this might actually be a problem because Shadow Fury has set up an expansion in the southeast of the map. But if that attack deals enough damage, it deals the damage in the right way, then Kitan will. And Shadow Fury sees coming back. He notices that there actually the attack is a lot more powerful because Kitan decided to hold this up until it's near the UPP. And the Octos will die, but unfortunately, so will this Shinveer and Zangir. So 
Shadow Fury is going to have to remake that expansion with new units. It'll be a lot harder to deal with. Titan, on the other hand, has not actually expanded himself. He is more worried about getting his defenses up, turtling in his main base, getting a couple reefs, two reefs, so one of them for tech, one for also healing. His advanced structures, like I said, for the domes would be necessary. Likely to get a spire soon as well, and I'm sure he's going to get chrono boarding too. So this will be very dangerous for Shadow Fury if he doesn't manage to deal with these Octos as quickly as possible. From Shadow Fury's point of view, the Octos are being mostly destroyed. Now he's kiting, kiting back with mostly the Shinveer and the Zyneveer, getting the Zyneveer back around to help fight these Octos. The Octos are being kited so that they get hit by the auto defense weapons, the Foundation's own defense turrets, without actually hurting any of Shadow Fury's units. And right now, it looks like Shadow Fury has completely held off the attack. The Octos are coming in from the north as they did originally, or sorry, as they did finally, but unfortunately for the Octos, they are being hit before they really do a lot of damage. So the Shinveer and Zyneveer are now trying to kite around again, but Titan will have no time to fix what's going on. However, the Zyneveer is the one that managed to avoid getting attacked. The Shinveer is getting attacked very directly, and unfortunately will probably not survive unless it kites as well. And this is about the last command, one of the last commands that Shadow Fury can issue at this time. Kite has actually jumped back as well to double check if he can fix this up. He can probably issue one command to these Octos, and he's actually sent his issue to start harassing the, LC, the QPRPs, and that will be dealing a little bit of damage, but not as much as it could have been. So Shadow Fury will ultimately be able to build that expansion in the southeast corner of the map, while Kitan has actually started focusing, like I said, focusing on his defense. He still has a lot of defense. He hasn't built a lot of units yet. I'm surprised he doesn't have a Spire yet, though, to be honest, because right now it would be a really good time to get that. Get far pods, get current porting. Probably he's just trying to get current porting as quickly as possible. Just, just rack, rack up resources. Getting an Octo as well for another RP on QP. So he's trying to get as much resources as he can to get current porting. So he'll be getting that very quickly. Shadow Fury, on their hand, about a minute down. Shadow Fury is... Once again, getting the Zion Pulsers, getting the expansion, making sure that he can actually deal some damage, and he will be jumping them in, as or skipping them in, as quickly as possible. ACC coming up as well, and another Zion Pulser coming in. So, Titan, however, has a very apt defense, very strong defense, so it'll be very difficult for Shadow Fury to get through this, and, like I said, Chrono Porting is being researched, and now Aspire is being built, so Farpaws being Chrono Port back will be very quickly coming to Shadow Fury's door, and... While Shadow Fury has some preparations for it with his Bastion, he doesn't have anything in the air for it. Teth Pulsar coming in just to double check, make sure not to deal too much damage. Zion Pulsar's coming in, trying to deal with the damage they can, but unfortunately, he got too close to the domes, trying to deal with these domes. Unfortunately, these domes are complete death, so Shadow Fury's gonna have to jump back and change how that skipped out. So now he's gonna have the Zion Pulsar skip down this dome, try to deal with this dome, and then sweep through the base that way. Not sure how effective this will be, unfortunately, because the domes are still pretty powerful, but the Zion Pulsar appears to be able to deal enough damage to this dome, so the dome will be destroyed very quickly. And Zion Pulses are dealing a ton of damage to Chitin's Triad. Gonna be making it very difficult for Chitin to actually start progening some Pharaohpods, but it looks like the dome beams are coming in, so the dome beams managed to destroy the Zion Pulses. Zion Pulses will not be able to deal enough damage. Really, Shadow Fury should have sent back a few more Zion Pulsers. Maybe not focus so much on air, because the Zion Pulsers on their own is going to be enough. The air units, while they can defend against Farpods, are going to have to defend against Farpods in the past. So Shadow Fury is going to have to get Gate Tech himself and send back all these units. Because the Farpods, if they come in... Because right now, I mean, Kitan is even a minute behind. A minute and a half behind. He's halfway through Chrono Boarding. And he's going to have a Spire soon. He's going to have a Farpod soon. And once that happens, I mean, he's going to be able to send units back to about here. And Shadow Fury doesn't have defenses there. He has defenses up here, so the only thing he can really do would be get more Zion Pulsers and then attack into the base as strongly as possible, because those dome beams are very powerful, although I've heard in the next patch they are going to be nerfed slightly. The energy in the dome is actually supposed to be zero at the start, and it's going to be zero at the start so that the dome beams can't fire until about, I think it's about a minute or so after the dome has been built, so that will be slightly more useful, but at this point, Shadow Fury does have to deal with the current patch, and the current patch is domes have full energy at start, so the dome can fire its beam, but Still sending back Zion Pulse to try to deal with this, and here we are. So, Titan has sent back a Farpod, Chrono Port back a Farpod, and now it's too late for Shadow Fury to try to deal with this, unfortunately. The best he can do is actually send back units of his own, which he's probably trying to do. He probably will be trying to get Gate Tech worrying about what's going to happen, but unfortunately he doesn't have enough resources right now. Has just realized that this expansion was alive, so now actually building it, building it up, developing it, getting more RPs, and also getting Skip Teleport on the Zion Pulsar as well. But really, it's not going to be enough. It's way too late. The Corona Port itself has actually fallen off in, almost in the unplayable past. It will be in the unplayable past very quickly, right about now. So yeah, at this point, Shadow Fury, all he can do about this, and another Corona Port coming in as well. So two Farpods are coming in, dealing a lot of damage. So these Corona Ports are going to be very damaging to Shadow Fury. 
not able to really take care of them right now because he doesn't have gate tech. He's going to have to get gate tech, but I really don't know how that will help much at this point. Really needed gate tech either two minutes ago or just needed to get in with six or seven Zion Pulsers and just sweep through Kitan's base. Just skip them around, get to the weak spot, just sweep through his base, kill all his triad, make sure they can't build any Farapaws. Even if he has Corona Porting, that's, that's 300 LC, or actually 400 LC, 300 QP pretty much, down the drain, not being useful for units. But unfortunately for Shadow Fury, he didn't manage to get through that, and Kitan will have free reign pretty much in this match. Three Farapods have been chronoported back to the past. The blue wave is the first one with any Farapods. That's going to be where all the damage is going to come from. So this is going to be very powerful. Once that happens, Shadow Fury is going to be in a very bad place. Very, very, very bad place. And Shadow Fury actually pushing towards the future has actually started researching gate tech as well, and he has enough foundations to get some slip gates. But like I said, that chronoport, the only thing that it can really do is go back in time to hit the, where the chronoport happened, because as we can see, Titan's chronoports are here. Shadow Fury is right here. If he jumps back, he can jump back three minutes and will maybe be able to stop one of the chronoports if he attacks the main base of Titan properly, which is going to be very difficult to do. On the other hand, Shadow Fury is trying to expand, put bastions everywhere around the map, because unfortunately, Shadow Fury hasn't realized that there is a chronoport coming in very quickly, and the blue wave is carrying his death. He's going to fast forward just to try to go towards the future and try to do what he can, get some initiative, but unfortunately he really doesn't have the initiative because he didn't manage to kill the Farapods when he had the chance. So the units coming in here aren't going to be able to deal enough damage to really take care of the Farapods, and right now the blue time wave is actually looks like it's carrying Shadow Fury's death, or most of it. There is still the independent base down here and here, but those aren't really going to be enough because Shadow Fury does need the resources, does need to have the units. And some units actually have been chronoported back, but Shadow Fury is not watching where they go, just not tip off Titan that they have gone back, but unfortunately, Titan has already chronoported. Oops, Titan has already chronoported back his units. That's going to be a big problem. Titan has chronoported back units. They're only unplayable past, so there's really nothing Shadow Fury can do to save himself. He he realizes that there's an attack coming in. There isn't much he can do, but really, there isn't much he can do. He lost most of his base. He lost this expansion here, Bastions here. All he has is a ton of LC and QP, which can be useful, but he doesn't have any depots, he has nothing to do with it. And this green time wave is probably carrying the ultimate death. Yes, it is. Red time wave as well is carrying even more Farapods coming in to destroy his entire base, finish him off completely. So, an interesting type of chronal defense, but unfortunately, really, against a chrono part, the best defense is trying to kill the units before they actually jump back in time to make sure that they never able to jump back in time in the first place. So they never will have attacked. But unfortunately, Shadow Fury was not able to do that, so... Unless Shadow Fury can pull something really tricky out with all the spare resources they managed to get, build a depot, build an annex, build a second base entirely, and just try to mess around. Hopefully, he can get something up, but it doesn't look like that's likely to happen. Unfortunately, this green time wave carrying is even more eventual death. And right now, Shadow Fury can't really do much with what he has. Trying to get what he can, trying to get some depots, trying to get some annexes, trying to basically build as many bases as he can to escape from the far pause until he manages to get enough to jump back and fight them. Kitan actually hasn't been sending back a lot more units since those chrono chronoports we saw earlier. So Kitan is more focused on getting weapons. He has, hasn't has actually sent out any chrono bombs or plasma cruise missiles yet, but unfortunately that is a possibility. Shadow Fury is not aware of it, but, he, but Shadow Fury is now seeing the Farpods coming in as well, or could be. And it looks like Shadow Fury has realized, yeah, an unplayable pass. The Farpods are in his base, dealing a lot of damage, so Shadow Fury has surrendered. So Kitan has won, and that was a pretty short game, actually. So thank you for watching, and have a good night.